Welcome to Bridges here at CBRC.tv. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all our viewers around the world. Hi, good evening, Dr. Evelyn Songko at sa mga viewers ng ating Bridges. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Another... And hello, good evening, good morning, or good afternoon to our uh, viewers on Bridges here on CBRC.tv. Welcome to Bridges here at CBRC.tv. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all our viewers around the world. Hi, good evening, Dr. Evelyn Songko at sa mga viewers ng ating Bridges. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Another... And hello, good evening, good morning, or good afternoon to our uh, viewers on Bridges here on CBRC.tv. Welcome to Bridges here at CBRC.tv. Good evening, good morning, and good afternoon to all our viewers around the world. I am Evelyn Sonko, and with me is Attorney Dwight Ramos. He is my co-host for this evening. He is the Vice President of the Law Alumni Foundation, Inc. Uh, hello, Attorney Dwight. Hi, Dr. Evelyn, and to all our viewers from around the world here at Bridges at CBRC.tv, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning to each and every one of you. Hello. Para ka tayo naka-yellow ngayon, ha? Ah, uh, yes, of course. This is the Martian color. This is a UST law. UST law. Yeah, ako naman, ha? UST alumni. O, di ba? Ganda na ko. Attorney Dwight. Tapos na yung love month, February 28 na ngayon. Pero of course, alam natin, hindi natatapos ang true love. Diba? That's right. <laughs> ano masasabi mo doon? Yeah, uh, of course. And syempre, yung ating guests uh, last week, si uh, Dean Raul and Ma'am Bell, no? More than 50 years, still in love and going to forever. Kaya oh, naman, oh. Eh, sa atin sa UST, ganyan din. So itong ating colors, no? the yellow color, uh, that we have here will go on forever. So, makukuha ito sa ating tax exchange. Wow! O nga! Totoo yan. Totoo yan. So true. Alam mo ba, maraming na-inspire last week. Nako, kinilig sila. No? Pero tonight, from the heart, we go to the brains. From mm -hmm. pursuit of the heart to pursuit of intellect. Diba? Attorney Dwight, siguro, Interesado na yung ating mga viewers to know more about our topic this evening because it has something to do with opportunities uh, for Filipinos to study and to research abroad. Diba? Would you like to introduce our speakers? Ay, isa okay. lang pala yung guest natin, speakers. Please introduce our guest. Yes, okay. I'll do that right now. And uh, our speaker for our guest for tonight or for this evening is uh, Joanne Fajardo. She handles the programs and communications at the Philippine American Educational Foundation or the PAEF, also known as the Fulbright Commission of the Phil in the Philippines. Ms. Fajardo is the point person for the Fulbright U.S. Student Program and the Hubert H. Humphrey Fellowship Program in the Philippines. Prior to her post at PAEF, she was a development worker and communications specialist for nonprofit organizations, development banks, and Filipino and American financial institutions. So, welcome to the show, Miss Joan Pajardo. Hello, good evening, po. Sa good evening, good morning, good afternoon to all the viewers of Bridges here on CBRC TV. Um, thank you for this opportunity, Attorney Dwight and Dr. Evelyn Songko. Hello, po. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome to the show, Joanne. Ako parang kailan lang, no? Nasa Varsi ka. Ngayon, eto ka na, you're telling us about the opportunities for Filipinos to uh, study 
and to do research and to do fellowship abroad. Uh, sige na, pwede na natin siguro umpisahan to, no, Joanne? Would you like to tell us, to tell our viewers about the opportunities for them abroad? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Evelyn. Yes, um, I'd like to um, give more opportunity or, or share information about the Fulbright program. Um, this program is already 75 years old. It's actually um, turning 75 this year. We started the, uh, This program started in 1976 when Senator J. William Fulbright, uh, a senator representing the state of Arkansas, um, thought of, you know, um, an international exchange program to pick up the pieces and create a more peaceful and prosperous future for all nations because it was after the world war the second world war so during his time um he thought of this idea to use surplus war money surplus war property to create an international exchange program between the people of the united states and about 160 participating nations um in you know in the world so Aside from the uh, 160 participating nations, which also has about 49 binational commissions, uh, which Philippines is a part of. So we have a lot of scholarship programs, not only for Filipinos, but also for Americans. In fact, the Philippine American Educational Foundation um, has the mission to um, you bring common understanding between the nation of the United States and the and the Philippines, and also we are realizing that vision right now of the of the Fulbright Philippines to, you know, have that um, to have a, a brilliant network of a brilliant mind of network of Fulbrighters to finally, you know, come come together and find a solution to the world's global problems. So, what better way right now to actually realize that vision, Doctor Song and Attorney Dwight? Now that we are in the middle of a global health crisis in a global pandemic because all of those scholars that we've funded in the last 75 years, about 400,000 Fulbrighters from all over the 160 participating nations uh, are now part of that Fulbright network of scholars. Yeah. Napaka-lawak pala, no? napaka-tanda na ng program na yan. And I'm sure it has benefited many, uh, syempre yung mga scholars, uh, but more, of course, the people uh, because of the work that they do. Um, Ms. Joanne, tell us also about the application process. Madali ba yan? Yeah, okay. Before we go there, Attorney Dwight, let me just introduce you to the 12 scholarship programs that the Fulbright Philippines Commission handles. So as I mentioned earlier, there are 12 scholarship programs. We have four Filipinos and four Americans. So for Filipinos, we have um, the Fulbright Foreign Student Program, which is the core program. Um, it offers master's and PhD studies to the United States. So we also have research um, scholarship grants under the Fulbright Visiting Scholar Program. And also, as a, a, aside from uh, those scholarship opportunities, we also have fellowship opportunities under the Hubert H. Humphrey Fellowship Program. So all of our viewers, whether you are a working professional in the academe, in the government, um, if you have at least uh, two years work experience in your field of specialization or study, you can be eligible to apply for a Fulbright scholarship, whether it's for pastors, PhD, research, or fellowship. Um, I'd like to invite Siguro our viewers to scan the QR code that leads them to the Fulbright Philippines website. So let's put a pause Siguro on that slide and uh, so our viewers can scan. If they scan this using your QR code scanners or cell phones, mobile phones, they can be directed to the Fulbright Philippines scholarships information page and then doon po um, attorney dwight makikita nila ang eligibility requirements and also the application procedure um it's 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 relatively easy right now po because we usually so actually accept paper applications but now good news everything is online so all they need to do is create um uh, uh, when they scan naman the application portal they create uh, a username and password so they can um, apply for the scholarship and scan all of the necessary documents for yes. Wow, that is so nice. That's so nice. So it's really just easy to apply, Joanne, no? Sa Fulbright. Yes, Basta maganda yung mga documents nila, no? Everything, everything I, is, everything is eligible. Uh, everything is, ano, um, uh, up, uh, 
done, done online po, you just need to, of course, as I mentioned earlier, the eligibility requirements, you must have at least two years work experience in your field of specialization. You can be, you can be from the academy, you can be, you know, teaching, non-teaching faculty or non-teaching staff. You can also be from the government or a non-profit organization and also private institutions. It's an open competition, Dr. Sonko. So if you feel that the time is right to, to apply for a master's program in the U.S. or a, a PhD program or do your research, this Fulbright opportunity might be the one for you. Pero uh, hindi lang naman yung mga grades ang uh, you know, consider, no? Could you tell our viewers what other things are being considered that you, it's not just the grades, no? Actually, yes, actually, Dr. Sonko, it's it's good that you pointed that out. Because they, they, they we, we get a lot of increase in questions. Na, do I really have to be... Of course, we, we, look, we take a look at your transcript of records as one of the documentary requirements that you need to upload to the online application portal. But that's not only the thing that we take a look at. You know, we take a look at the entire application. It's, an, it's a holistic kind of review and selection process. Um, meaning, um, we give opportunities for you know, for the uh, for our applicants or you know um, potential scholars to present themselves. We are very particular. Well, while we look at the grades as well, we also take a look at the study plan. We also take a look at the statement of purpose. So we also, of of course, take a look at the recommendation letters from your recommenders and check. You know, how can this person or this um, uh, potential scholar contribute to making this country a little better than it was yesterday? That's what we always say. That's the reason why we try to invest in these people, try to invest in these Filipinos so they can go to the U.S. and study for free. And then when they come back, they can serve their country in whatever capacity. Yeah. Attorney so, Dwight, may ang tanong dyan, I think. Yeah. Uh, na isip ko. Because uh, you were talking about timeline and the right time to get the master's or PhD program. How about yung age requirement? Meron bang uh, age limit yan, John? Ah, uh, okay. That's uh, that's also one of our frequently asked questions. We want to emphasize that the Fulbright program does not discriminate on age. Discriminate on age. Um, does not discriminate on gender or gender preferences. Also, does not discriminate on ethnicity, race, and also does not discriminate on disability. So, um, most of our master, uh, most of our scholarship programs are um, do, do not have an age limit. Well, of course, aside from those other programs that have specific target beneficiaries, like for young educators or teachers, and also of course for the Global Undergraduate Exchange Program which um, offers only scholarship opportunities for college students for one semester. This is the online mm -hmm. application portal, Palato ni Dwight. Um, our viewers can also actually scan this to be able to create their username and password for them to be able to apply online for the scholarship. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. I was, I was uh, looking at the schedules and there were several programs, Joanne. Would you like yes. to explain those uh, programs that you have? Yes. Yes, siguro quickly lang, um, Dr. Songko, if you notice this Global Undergraduate Exchange Program, which of uh, it, um, the deadline for application is March 15. This is open to college students po. If they want to experience one semester in the U.S. to study, this might be an opportunity for them. And then also, very importantly, the March 31 deadline for the core programs, the Fulbright Foreign Student Program, which offers master's and PhD studies, and also the Fulbright Shed, which is very important, only focuses or offers PhD scholarship grants, but open to all those who are working in Shed recognized HEIs or higher education institutions. So our um, Tomashan community and the USC community are eligible to apply for this program as well. That's right. Mm. Uh, but other than the Fulbright program, Ms. John, are there other opportunities as well for Filipinos to study or do research abroad? Yes, Attorney Dwight. In fact, um, as I mentioned, this Fulbright program is um, a binational agreement between. It's funded by both the Philippine governments and the U.S. government, and um, our partners or um, our um, colleagues at the U.S. Embassy in Manila and also at, at Education USA are also giving informa giving out free advice or information for those naman po who want to take up their studies in the U.S. If you don't want to go through the scholarship route, you have naman your own funds. 
um, and then you just don't know where to begin. You just don't know where to start. Of course, the U.S. Embassy in Manila um, has a free service called Education USA Philippines. They can email Manila at educationusa.org, and um, if they have questions, they also they're also on social media. They can take a look at the opportunities. They have free advising on a monthly basis. If they don't know where, you know, they they could go to do their research or maybe do their master's and PhD, Education USA can also help. Yes. Ako, Joan, may pag-asa pa ako, no? Attorney yes, Dr. Snowcon. I'm yeah. sure marami na tatanong kung may pag-asa pa sila, Attorney Dwight. I'm sure uh -huh. interested ka, Attorney Dwight. May pag-asa ka pa. Uh, definitely. Uh, kasasabi lang na they don't discriminate uh, based on uh, age. So, may pag-asa <laughs> pa. <laughs> may pag-asa pa talaga tayo dalawa. Oh, because you know we can do research there. We can do fellowship. Ah, yung merong kang Humphrey fellowship. What's that all about, Joan? Okay. Um, I mentioned earlier we have of um offerings for master's PhD research. We also have offerings for fellowship. While the Humphrey Hubert Humphrey Fellowship Program is one of the programs we administer, it's not. It doesn't um give out a degree. It's a non-degree award, but it gives you a uh, a professional uh, um fellowship of ten months. You'll be in the U.S. for ten months if you are already in your mid career. The only difference for from the eligibility requirements of the core program is that. If you want to apply for the Humphrey, you must have at least five years work experience. So we expect that you already have like a position that's uh, permanent or a supervisory managerial role in your organization to be able to apply for um, the Hubert H. Humphrey Fellowship Program. Yeah, may uh, narinig ako, Attorney Dwight, who has, who, who went through that program from USD? Merong kamasyan, di ba lawyer? Ah, judge. Uh, yeah. Judge, You're probably yes. talking about uh, Judge Aguinaldo. No. Yes, yes, he went to the program. And then oh. uh, he, he, he told me at uh, 54 years old when he went through the we, program. Wow. Di ba? <laughs> 54 years old, ah? Yes, yes Judge, Judge uh -oh. Philip is really an, uh, a testament to the Fulbright program not being um, discriminatory in terms of age. So we want to make sure that everyone gets a fair chance. And as I mentioned, it's an open competition naman po. Oh, totoo yan. So they can do... Pag fellowship, ano yung ginagawa doon, Joan? There's, um, okay, it's a mixture of um, professional affiliations and classroom lectures. Meaning you get the chance to sit in subjects and courses based on your Humphrey program and based on your study field, you will be assigned to the university that uh, that is accredited by the Humphrey program to um, to run that um, study field. And then um, part a part naman of your 10-month uh, stay in the U.S. will be for professional affiliations. So, uh -huh. for example, if you want just an, uh, just a quick example, if you are st if your study field is in communications or journalism, you might be professionally affiliated with um, a news outlet or you know like a, a broadcast um, outlet in the United States to do um, your Humphrey Fellowship. So it's 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 quite a good experience then po talaga. Yeah, so, and then yes. may immersion, de ba? Meron silang immersion. Yes, yeah, that's correct. I think that's a very life changing uh, experience for them. Tama ba? Yung, yung immersion in the culture. You see, what's really beautiful about being an international student is you are able to interact with uh, different people and then therefore there is uh, really going to be a very big advantage on your part. Hindi ba? So yun, yun, isa yan sa mga ino-offer ng Fulbright uh, yes. scholarship. Yes. Mga opportunities yes, for our Filipino uh, well, anyone, no? whether mga, mga professionals and students. Tell us more about the students, uh, Joanne. Uh, baka may mga estudyante tayong nanonood and they're interested to go on a uh, sa parang sandwich program ba ang tawag mo? Oh, actually, if, if you are a college student, Dr. Songko, um, you are only eligible to apply for the Global Undergraduate Exchange Program, which offers uh, one semester of college um, experience in the U.S. So I when see. yeah, when you go back, you will um, if you make an arrangement with your university or, set, for example, with USD to be able to credit all those subjects that you took in the U.S. for one semester. So um, it it also it, as you mentioned, it's a life a life changing, uh, no, life changing experience, life changing process because what we 
spouse here at the Fulbright program, whether whatever scholarship program you're, you're, um, you were awarded with, is that when you come back to your country, and it's one of the uh, eligibility requirements, Dr. Songko, huh? you must return to your country, you must be committed to return your, to your country to serve your country in whatever capacity. And of course, also, you must be a Filipino citizen. We have to emphasize that. Yes, and kanina napag-usapan natin si Judge Philip, no? I see here in the screen the uh, other notable alumni, uh, Ms. Joanne. Can you yes, tell us about them? Yes, that's correct. Um, our uh, current dean of Faculty of Engineering at the UST is Dr. Filipina Marcelo, who took up his, her PhD in the United States um, via Cornell University and under the Fulbright pr program. So her PhD study was funded by the Fulbright program. And you mentioned kanina, Dr. Sonko, si Judge Philip Aguinaldo. He was also um, uh, funded by the Fulbright program under naman the Hubert Humphrey Fellowship Program. Yeah. So uh -huh. one of also our notable alumni po. Oh, that is inspiring huh, to our scholars. Uh, scholarship should really be uh, promoted. Oh, ayan na. May picture si uh, Judge Ginaldo. No? Uh, nakakatuwa naman. We're happy for him. Sana mas marami pang lawyers. No? Natamashin ako. <laughs> Ganyan ba na promote natin sa Law Alumni uh, Foundation. Yes. Na? Yeah. Yes. And, and, and John, how about research on community nursing or community health and sanitation? Pwede rin ba i-consider yun? Ah, okay. Sige, I'll make a very quick clarification, uh, Attorney Dwight. Ano? If you are taking up your master's or PhD, applying for, for those grants under the full life program, nursing is actually not covered. But if you're going to do research on, say, community nursing or um, community health and sanitation, um, it's very, it, it borders also on public health. Eh? So uh, we don't see why there isn't any reason that this should be covered. So it, it is covered under the Fulbright Visiting Scholar Program or the research grants. So, so uh, any one of our faculty members or, uh, you know, people who do, who are very much into research might be able to, uh, might be eligible for this, uh, for the Fulbright uh, Visiting Scholar Program under the Advanced Research and Lecturing Branch. So actually, lahat ng programs, you have provision for them. Available for research, for for uh, fellowship, and also for scholarship. Yes. And everything yes. will have to be done in the U.S., including yes. the research. So if you're going to apply for research grant, your research will have to be done in the U.S. Tama That's ba? correct. That's correct, Dr. Sonko. Part, uh, uh, a very important component of the Fulbright Scholarship Program is that you do your time in the U.S. Um, there are no offers of offerings for full for um, purely online study or purely online research. You will really be um, transported to the U.S. to do your research there. Um, so because there's a cultural exchange component po that we need to actually um, uh, offer to, the, to our scholars. Yeah, that is beautiful. And pwede ba, Joanne, tell them? Ano to, interesado si Attorney Dwight dito. Ano yung benefits ng, mga, ng uh, scholars or the fellows or the researchers? Okay, definitely po, um, when you are shortlisted for the Fulbright program, um, the Fulbright program actually pays for your um, TOEFL exam that's a, a, a savings of about 215 US dollars already. And then if you're applying to your master's or PhD, in your online application, you are required to put in your at least four preferred universities. If you get shortlisted, Dr. Sonko, the Fulbright program pays for your application fees to all of those universities. So that's about um, almost a thousand US dollars in savings already. Um, and also we take care of your round trip international travel. We take care of paying for your tuition. And um, we also offer you a monthly stipend or monthly maintenance allowance. And then also your um, health and uh, your, your books and um, supplies allowance and also health and accident insurance. Wow. Comprehensive. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I, here, I, uh, Attorney Dwight, yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, may nakalagay si, from Miss Sally Aguinaldo. I work for government in the environment, currently taking up my master's on public administration. Are these courses, are there courses on environmental education? Uh, okay. Sige po. Um, thank you for that question, Miss Sally Aguinaldo. Yes, actually, environmental education is a covered field. So meaning, um, we have to emphasize that the Fulbright program 
Uh, aside, of course, all of the study fields that you can imagine, all of the study fields that or courses are, that are being offered in American universities, except only for, as I mentioned, for master's and PhD, except um, medicine, accounting, um, OT and PT, occupational therapy, physical therapy, nursing, and clinical psychology. So yun lang po yung mga exceptions. Um, but if you are into architecture, environmental education, um, law, communications, um, uh, the arts, you know, like any, any any of our STEM fields as well, and any any from social sciences and humanities, um, those are all covered programs. Po. And, and and the list is also on the website po, if you visit fullbright.org.ph. Yeah. But, uh, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, there's a question, an another question, Attorney Dwight. Yes, from Miss Marilyn Cano. Is there an opening for PhD lawyers? So, law, yeah, oh yes. Thank, thank you, uh, Miss Marilyn Cano. Uh, law is a covered field. If if you're taking up masters so LLM, if um, and it's also a covered field po, uh, for those who want to take up uh, PhD. Law wow, is a covered cool. field, but, whether whether for um, your own, I'm sorry. graduate studies, graduate studies, research or fellowship. Yes, Doctor Songko. Ah, I was just thinking, law, I, medicines, PT, uh, and other other courses, no, in uh, in health are not covered. However, if for example they're going to study about, uh, uh, it's in the field of medicine, but it has something to do with uh, community health. Will that be covered? Like say community, uh, let's say. Uh, uh community nurses in the community something will that be covered whether by be considered yeah community health po is bordering on public health dr songko so uh, we we actually we currently have someone at johns hopkins university who is taking up his oh. master's in public health and if you want to do no uh. research on community health and sanitation it's also covered po by the by the program oh oh I see. Wonder at least that will be clar. I mean, it's clarified, and uh, at least they have hope. No, they have hope. <laughs> okay. So, yes. uh, Joan, would you like to give your uh, last message to our viewers? Okay. Thank, thank you, po, Doctor Songko. I just wanted, siguro, maybe at this point, share, you know, with our viewers, uh, the viewers of CBRC.tv via this Bridges um, program. Um, where we can, where you know where you can reach us if you have any questions we have we are on social media we have a Facebook page we have um, a Twitter page we are also on Instagram and LinkedIn and um, our office is located in Mandaluyong City but of course right now due to the current pandemic you may reach us via phone or most importantly via email you may send your increase to fulbright at fulbright.org.ph as i mentioned um it's only we thank you for this opportunity po dr songko and attorney dwight to promote the scholarship programs that are available to filipinos um because it only really takes you know a little bit of you know this this kind of program to for for, for filipino citizens and working filipinos to know about the opportunities that that they have so thank you for this opportunity to to be of service and also as Rimashan alumni. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're happy that you came, actually, no? We're happy that you were able to find time. We should be the one to thank you, Joan, because you see, uh, by guesting in our show, you were able to give hope to many of our uh, young people and even the older one. Thank you so much for coming, Joan. Attorney yes. White. Yes, thank you, Ms. John. And of course, uh, thank you to the UST Alumni Association uh, for sp sponsoring the show tonight. And to all our alumni, follow us on Facebook at the UST Alumni Association, Inc. And visit our website at USTAlumniAssociationInc.org. Support our Tomashan Alumni Exchange. Look at our shirts. You can have yours too, or you can uh, get them and uh, give them as gifts. The online marketplace uh, where Tomashan alumni sellers and buyers meet. So if you have items for sale or if you are looking for alumni souvenir items, message us at our Facebook page. Okay, uh, we have two special items. Uh, the Cargasus, a beautiful storybook for young and old alike. That is a creation of Father Edgardo Alaurin, OP, and a set of Cantinco products in a beautiful 
fully painted wooden box. Hmm. Baka merong okay. shout out dyan, nakalimutan natin ha. Okay, uh, so I'd like to thank the UST AAI Board of Trustees, the volunteers, the CBRC staff, and of course, I'd like to thank Fulbright. So, ladies and gentlemen, or to our viewers, join us again on March 7 at 6 p.m. Let us be inspired uh, to sow bridges of hope by Mr. Kiel Mariano, a student from the College of Nursing. Nakakatuwa yung kwento niya. Kaya napakaganda, pakinggan natin kung ano yung ginawa nitong uh, batang ito para tayo ay talagang ma-inspire sa kanya, no? Uh, Attorney Dwight, uh, an alam ko last day mo na ngayon eh, nang pag co host sa akin eh, di ba? So baka naman meron kang message din sa ating mga viewers. Yes, uh, thank you very much. It's been a very good experience for me to co-host with Dr. Evelyn uh, for at least four episodes now during the month of love, during the month of February. But of course, it's not the last time that I will be co-hosting with her. Uh, uh, just like the other co-hosts, we'll be back again and again uh, to help, of course, uh, Dr. Evelyn in hosting Bridges, the show of the UST alumni. Thank you so much, Attorney Dwight, for giving me, for, you know, uh, being my companion uh, in the last four episodes. And yeah. to everyone, I hope that you will continue watching uh, Bridges here at CBRC. Here at Bridges, we do not build walls. We build connections. Connections of learning, connections of people, and we build connections to gain knowledge. We build bridges of faith, hope, and love. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye and good night. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Welcome to Bridges here at CBRC.tv. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all our viewers around the world. Hi, good evening, Dr. Evelyn Songko. At sa mga viewers ng ating Bridges, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Again. Another... And hello, good evening, good morning, or good afternoon to our uh, viewers on Bridges here on CBRC.TV.